I want to live forever. <laughs> okay. Some parents will know if you want to have hypertension quickly, let teenagers come and live in your house. Is it that bad? Um, I'm going through a lot, please. Define a lot. Oh. Anyway, we'll, we'll understand a lot of that this morning. <laughs> You know, because, uh, you know, research, sundry research have shown that <laughs> adolescence can be a difficult time. The child is going through rapid physical changes, emotional ups and downs, a lot. <laughs> 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 because the young people aren't always sure of where they fit, and they're still trying to work out a good number of things. So adolescence can, can be... A time when peer influences cause stress. Also defined as a lot. But let's have a conversation around that this morning with um, Amina Yus Yunus Ali, who is a family therapist. Thank you for joining us this morning. Such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. We are back with that. Again. A yes. lot question. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I'm going through a lot. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they are going through a lot. I mean, you just defined adolescence. Um, the cognitive challenges, the emotional challenges, the physical, biological because challenges. Because my voice is breaking and I'm growing breasts. That's I, a lot. That's a lot, yes. But you went through this as an adolescent yourself. You just, not, it wasn't defined for you. So you just assumed it was just another face yes. of growing up. It's, it's, it's normal, now, so I'm becoming a you woman. You didn't have to go on Google to research what's going through my brain. Oh. But they don't have Google. They don't have, they, some people, some adolescents will even tell you their mental health challenges. Oh, I know I'm ADHD. Oh, I know that I am depressed, right? They can easily tell you that because they've researched it for. They so, are now doctors too. <laughs> exactly. So we have this influx of information that is part of the lot that they are dealing with. Mrs. So, Ali, sometimes <laughs> I ask myself, if um, I was not better off living in the dark, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but then you Gr have growing your phone. up in the dark, <laughs> you, you know? have your phone, you have the ease of travels that we had to have. Perhaps, you know, for context, yeah. a good number of parents are wondering, are, are literally running crazy. Oh. With the attitude, well, you'll be able to tell us whether I'm right or not. <laughs> with the attitude of this, we just come on. Wait, what you just did, does it make sense to you? As in, sometimes I even hear that sometimes they do things not because they want to do, but they just want to test your resilience. As they, a want to pay, they want you to pay attention, to wake up, to okay, show help that people you can. understand. Okay, when, so, okay, yeah. when, a, when a child, a teenager, or a young adult is being difficult what are they doing what are the young ones doing and what how does the reaction of a mom or dad make it better or worse so there are certain factors that define adolescence so adolescence is not whether that child is um, 13 or 15 adolescence is a period and it starts as early as 9 till up until 21 or 25 so in that period, it is a transition period. It is a hiccup period of cognitivity and emotional resilience. Now, what this simply says is that the ability to make the right decisions is not perfect or it is not matured enough. What we see as parents, what we expect as adults in their lives is that because you are 19, you should know better. But in that space of their, whether they're in the middle adolescence or early adolescence, regardless of the age, there is a struggle of, would this make me feel noticed? Would this make me feel accepted? Would this make me feel um, a part of a society? Now, what used to happen in the olden days, like you mentioned that, um, Salera, is that you know, we didn't know enough. We relied on our parents to teach us. We relied on the adults in our lives to mm -hmm. teach us. Mm -hmm. But in this day and age, the adolescents in our lives 
are relying more on information from friends and peers and the internet more than they would their parents because again a lot has shifted in the family claim there is no more that coordinated connected cohesive family bond in most fa in, in most families these days children are struggling with the hustle culture so the symptoms of what you just mentioned mr Ayo, is the effect of the changing climb of the adolescent period there's no more human interaction as much as there is peer interaction as much as there is internet connection mm. for this adolescent so their That's challenge the is now how do i navigate all those things going on in my head good so in i have such a question a way, in, that, in that in that regard my my sincere apologies for butting in so they would rather take information from friends and, and the, the internet, internet as opposed to taking from parents it's like they have a choice because how often are their parents are available okay, for them? Actually, even okay. those that are available exactly. they regard as mm, you don't understand dinosaur. well then that means the connection wasn't built from the get-go because before a child becomes an adolescent that child has been that person has been a child that person is a human have you connected have you learned how to speak their language have you learned what exactly makes them tick have you learned how they navigate um, conflicts as humans? Because what we sometimes want to do as adults is we, we assume that we've seen it all. We know it all. We know it better. But then they go back to school and, and they are something else. <laughs> what do you know? Have you heard about this? I had a case of a young child, 13, 14, they were about who've changed schools. And who, she didn't even change school. She was almost school for a while. Only for her to get into the mainstream school and then there was a struggle of, oh, what do you know? And each time discussions is going on in the class, she has to either pretend that she's not listening or find a way to, you know, show that she's a part of the conversation. Because peerage can be difficult um, to navigate. I mean, even for us as adults, peerage can be difficult because we want to be among, we want to feel like we count, we matter. So for an adolescent who is struggling to make the right decision, whose prefrontal cortex is not even matured enough to differentiate between the gray, the black, and the white, mm -hmm. yet yes. that period is going to be even much more um, overwhelming for them to navigate with their peers. In all of this, how much weight has peer pressure on the life of a teenager? I think peer pressure, we are giving so much to peer pressure without taking responsibility as adults ourselves. Because even these peers are being raised by people. Yes. Who have peers. Who have peers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it's a matter of, you know, the person my adolescent is um, friends with, what are their values? Because in some families, they would, um, they expect that once you are 15 or so, I mean, in some countries even, once you are 15 or 16, you can drive. In Nigeria, you dare not try it. In yes. fact, once you're so 15 that is, or 16, you begin to, they begin to plan for you to move out, to of, move their out house. of the house. But yes. you can't do that here in Nigeria. But these are the confusions that our children are actually faced with as Africans because they are struggling with understanding where do I even fit in? What do my experience expect? One minute you want them to be an adult and to make certain decisions or to think things through. Another minute you're saying, oh, you're still a child, you shouldn't know this. But the friends that they are mixing, um, they are going out with, they are playing with, they are gisting with, has the autonomy or the independence of a 25-year-old. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering, where is this influence coming from? Mm -hmm. It's going to be attractive because it seems like, wow, so you can make that decision. That's nice. I like, to be, I like your mom to be my mom. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's going to be attractive. Not for knowing that. the upbringing that the other not fellow knowing, got. Not knowing even the sacrifices that is costing this child. Because... The 15 being treated like a 25-year-old is also missing parental connection. He's also wishing that I have a parent who would notice me. And this is why there is this up, um, increase in substance abuse okay. among these teenagers. We'll, we'll get to those huh. ones. Yeah. So that's substance abuse part because people need to understand why that is. But, you know, something I later said the other time, I'd like you to expatiate on it, you know, right? because... A sizable number of people watching us now are wondering what their child means when the child says, 
oh, mommy, you don't understand. And the mommy is like, come the holy on. You're 17. I was 17 30 years ago. I was 17 20 years ago. So you can't tell me I don't understand because you are, I'm 20 years older than you. I have been 17 before. How can you tell me I don't understand? She wouldn't dare say to her mom, Oh, not. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Do you want to die? <laughs> but you know, as, as you said, things have since shifted. Two mm. things we're going to talk about, you know, the drug thing that you and then mm. they, they, are, they are whatever on social media. But what, what does a child, a young adult mean when the child says, when the young adult says, Mom, you don't understand. We really or Dad, don't. We don't get it. You don't get it. Yeah, we really don't. <laughs> and until we invite them to tell us what we don't get, we will still be, you know, in that space of I'm older and I know better, and they'll be in that space that you just don't care. But so approximately how get, many of them uh, have that rapport with their parents who can actually sit down and say, okay, mom, sit down, let me tell you about it. Because this I is, want you to understand. And, you know, I'm so happy that you asked that question. This is the reason parents need to recognize that we can't parent the way we were parented. Our parents were, they did the best, absolute best that they could. And it's so amazing that we have a number of well-adjusted adults that we do right now. Because they also parented from a place of um, their parents, how they taught them. But now there is a lot more resources that we need to harness that we need to take care of. If you had to say, summer is coming now, right? Well, the long holidays for Nigerians mm -hmm. is coming. And you'll find parents looking for places to put their children, one summer camp or the other. How many of them will sit down for a parenting class? How many of them would want to learn what exactly is my child going through? Because when they are saying we don't understand, we don't understand that their peers are actually pushing them, teasing them, bullying them passively and aggressively towards things that they really don't want to do at the expense of their own personal values. We don't understand that their choices seem constricted to either being a part of a peer age that is loud and flashy and insultive as against their own personal values of trying to just do their own thing as quietly as they can. Because as far as we are concerned, if it is not celebrated on social media, it is nothing. Mm, mm. And this is the challenge that they are struggling with right now. So if you were to ask parents, oh, please show up for a parenting class, they probably won't show up. If you were to even ask coaches, come and learn what exactly today's teens are doing, what they are struggling with. They probably tell you that, oh, I've just done life coaching certification course and that's enough. But it's different for adolescents because the transitional age for adolescents is very, very delicate. But it can be beautiful. It can be celebrated. It is worth sitting down to study as an African parent, as an African teacher, as an African caregiver, to understand what exactly we need to do differently because of the global incursion of values that is different to our own. That's another space that we want it. Yeah. I, to, I wish we could be able to take it up. Well, yeah. Quick one on the pre pressure following up on Alara's question. Um, I know a, a young adult was 15 at the time. The parent took her and her sister to school every day. And it was, and it, I think it was a public school. Along the line, this teenager said to the dad, don't come and pick us again. <laughs> and, uh, what, boy, how are you going to get home? <laughs> don't worry, dad, we we'll we'll walk, walk home. Well, the dad was happy, at least <laughs> a relief for him. him. Mm -hmm. However, he found out later, she found a well. She eventually revealed to the family that it was because they were calling her Omo Get Inside. <laughs> In other words, it wasn't because she, wasn't, she didn't like the fact, but that her classmates mm. uh, were not... Mocking her. Mocking her because mm. the classmates didn't have parents coming to pick them. Mm. How is that a bad thing? Oh, because you are trying to love your child, right? I mean, How for, is it the for the parent, thing? that's it. I mean, like, I love you with everything I have. I give you all the comfort there is. But for the child, you can see the maelstrom here now that 
fitting in you are interfering yes by fitting coming to in perfect. with my peers is a lot more important and this you see this thing is not a challenge really when we were young we played with friends in the sand we did our own version of test by moonlight and then, the then we did 10 10 yes we had a lot of fun with our peers. Am I Sue? And even when we hear our parents' voices, we know they told us not to go and play that bolo. But you will still go. You only be watching out. Please stay at the junction. When that is coming, let me know. And you would run inside. So it wasn't that we didn't know that peer age was important. It is still important. Well, we'll, peer age is what informs Well, will the, will the child have said that to the parents if the others children had their parents come pick them up don't answer that one <laughs> <laughs> let's go to let, let's go to the issue you mentioned about uh you know substance use and all of yeah. that what makes that how serious is the problem what is it that makes children now you know i was calling them young adults now i'm saying children <laughs> oh, what yes, is this because children it starts early yeah for prey to such things in the first place what are they trying to escape from? Because, I mean, it's only natural to think that they must be wanting to escape from something. Yeah. So, you know, earlier I said that there are certain factors that define adolescence. One of the factors is um, social inclusivity. Now, what social inclusivity means is that you are able to understand what your society expects of you and how you can go about raising, you know, including yourself in the so solution framework for that society. If you ask a typical 17-year-old, you know, what they want to be in the future, they'll tell you what they want to make money. What that money is going to be used for is they, they really don't understand. They really don't know. Because, again, we are taking the earnestness of trying to find solutions to problems away from them and, we, and provided comfort. So comfort for us is love. Comfort for us is caring for that child. But it's also restricting their adolescent development in such a way that they are included in the society's framework for solution. Um, the problem of substance abuse comes from the lack of social consciousness. I don't even know what I'm doing here. What, is the, what exactly am I doing here in this world? For most of these adolescents, if they are not running away from poverty, like you mentioned that they are running away from, so if they are not running away from poverty, they are running away from a lack of connection. Because when you're connection in with what their parents, with society that should matter to them. Their parents. Their parents. Their caregivers. Their teachers. Because while the parents is how, um, very concerned about the grades, the teacher is very concerned about the behavior. Both cannot agree on what the values of the child should be. So the child is left in limbo. And you know, after all, my my parents are paying your salary. If I'm going to your school, so. You have to deal with me the way, ever, however way you want to. Mm. You know, so that is the effect of um, the void that we have in today's adult, um, young adults. But it also bears that it is very um, sad to assume that this problem is because of just them. It's also because of the adults in their lives who think that they can do what they want. You just the children that they are raising should just do what they say. That wasn't the way for our parents. When our parents said, what's your amenity one she in your, but loosely translated, I remember the child of whom you are, it meant something. It meant that me as, I, as a value. parent, I was leaving that value that I'm expecting you to leave. But when you go on TikTok and you have all this um, Instagram fights and different things, and then you expect your child to live a different value system, it is unfair, it is unjust, and this is why the young adults will call you out on Twitter and say, who are you? Let's go to that online. Um, we'll, we'll go to a number of other, you want yes, to ask? Yes, yes. Um, how does a parent monitor what a young adult is doing online? Because last week I saw uh, something about a child who had been scammed by three Nigerian boys. Oh, yeah. I you saw, saw that. Too. Yeah. I, I don't know if they posted a picture pretending to be a lovely girl, mm. and he now had a... Catfishing process. Whatever you will call it. 
And uh, when he then found out that they were boys, he said, I feel so bad, I want to kill myself. And they asked him and to there go is, on. If you don't do it, I'm going to make sure that you do. Hmm. And he goes ahead and kills himself. So his parents want these three boys in Nigeria to be held responsible for the death of their son. So how does one check and control what they're doing? By the time they get to 15, 16, so it's kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because again, life is lived online. This there's school, homework assi um, and assignments have been submitted online, um, research papers and everything. So they can there's pretend homework. to be doing so homework. So they can be, pretend to be doing, I mean, sometimes when I'm having Zoom sessions with some adolescents, they are back chatting each other, forgetting that it's been recorded and I can read the chat later. You know, so that's, there's a lot of that going on. But it's also the, um, the these are symptoms of a very, very sick and um, diseased world diseased families and it always always has to start with the family what are our values what are the constant things that we are espousing with our children how many families have family meetings or family movie nights what do you watch together because some of these ideas they come from what movies these children watch oh they watch one movie today it's fantastic it's not from nigeria it's from, it's a Hollywood or a Bollywood movie, and they're like, okay, you can actually do this. They have the resources. You're always um, renewing subscription to your internet data plan. So yeah, they have the resources. They've got the phone, they've got the device. So yes, let's even try it. They try that once they get, it, they get away with it. They try it again and again until it becomes bad. So to get to the extent of actually, so the last time I was there, I mentioned suicide pact. It's a real thing. Adolescents are actually making pacts to decide when they want to leave this world. Not because um, death is that fantastic, but it is just a way for them to take control where they feel helpless, <laughs> where they feel like no one is paying attention to them. So maybe if we do this, somebody somewhere will pay attention. All so, those are just manifesting because we forgot again that some of the values that our parents taught us, like um, praying together, like eating Sunday dinner together, mm -hmm. like um, ensuring that they go to your school meetings just to mm -hmm. speak. They don't just ask about your grades, they ask about what kind of child this person is. I remember the first time my mom went to my school and was speaking to one of my teachers, and my, t and my teacher was like, we, we can't be praising a child in front of her, but she's one of the good ones. And I was like, for, for as long as I didn't even think this man was noticing, but he was telling my mom, well, and those were things that we learned, we learned subconsciously from our parents. So we let that go because, again, we are working parents. We work nine, not to five, till 12 a.m. Mm. We work on the weekends, we go to golf meetings, we go to clubs for networking and everything. But we are forgetting the values of togetherness in the family. Okay. It's the one thing mm. that would just instill one, those bonds. I, I want to just stretch a bit what she just spoke about. The Nigerians are very religious people, in quotes. Yeah. They go to the mosques, they go to the churches, they pray all the time. Whatever they say, ah, in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, the devil is a liar. Mm. Oh, this. Oh, God, How God, much God. of that rubs off on the children? Very because little. we were taught the sanctity of life when we were growing up. Yeah. In fact, discussion never even went there. It was from reading the Bible and all that. What were you talking about telling your child about the sanctity of life? <laughs> <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting one cause that's one. Oh, but you were glad to wake up every morning. You were glad to be alive. And yet here we are, they're having suicide. They want to take their own lives. Mm. So How did we get here? So it's about recognizing that going to there's a difference between religiosity and spirituality. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between faith and trust. I have to first trust you to have faith in you. Mm -hmm. To trust you would mean that you have shown up for me several times, as, as many times as I've needed you. Before I can faithfully say, okay, yeah, this is a person that, you know, will catch me when I fall. Manab, um, we have very little time. Yeah. But there oh, are yeah. two things that I want you to do. One, um, very quickly, I, I want you to speak to what should parents do now. But before that, please help make sense of this. This, you said that people, children are, uh, parents are very, very busy. In this extremely busy nation, 
society and all. Help us understand or give some inkling as to how parents can make out time from their no time to at least start up the conversation of getting to know these children. Um, the most important part is to first start with sit, taking a child and asking for an evaluation of yourself first. Try to know how far you've been performing. Who do you that, say I am? Yeah, like well, exactly. I mean, um, how well do you feel like we are connected? Do you, do you think we are close together? That kind of audit kind of gives you an idea of where you need to begin a conversation from. But in all our business is also, we do a one bear. If our friend is calling us 24 hours, giving us a 24 hour notice of a housewarming party that he or she wants to throw, we'll make time out for it. So we can. So it is not that we are that busy that we can't make time out for these children. We should. We can and we should make time out for them. More importantly is to first re-educate yourself because the old ways are no more working and the children have been left to parent themselves. So they are parentified already and we need to pick up the bottom from where we stopped, where our own mothers stopped. Right. So go to um, attend um, classes, go to parenting classes. There's a thing, coaching certification program coming up. It is not just for coaches. Because one of the things that I hear in my practice is that, oh, please help us fix our child. Your child is not broken. It is your bond that is broken. So come to class, learn some of those things. Go for families, education courses that would open up. Because even those people that we are copying, they have a lot of classes. They have a lot of online classes. There are some that are mandated the minute you are pregnant for you to take. But we don't do that. We will go and do antenatal, like we will clap and we dance and they will tell you how to, what to eat and what not to eat. But they don't tell you how to raise a child. Okay. But that is where the job is because we are not raising just a child. We are raising a whole human being. Yeah. And to raise a well-adjusted human being yeah. means that you have actually identified the voids that you have and are ready to change You yourself that. assume that the parent is adjusted. But well, that's why I put it <laughs> politically that you have to identify those so the, boys. The, the, the days of um, children are to be seen and not heard are very much over. Oh, please. We need we to actually converse with our children. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, you ask a child, uh, go to your room. The next question is, why? why? My five-year-old will ask you why. Like, really, why? If you ask her to do something, he's going to ask you why. And I have to explain to her. Because that is what it means for, to raise a child who is responsible, who is going to be a, a responsible adult. I don't even know what to say to that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, this is an endless conversation. We'll try to, you know, bring up this kind of conversation as frequently as possible because a sizable number of parents are disheartened. They are running crazy yeah. thinking about, you know, this and a number of other issues. We have to uh, thank you very much this morning for being pleasure. here. Amina Yunus Ali is a family therapist. Thank you again for your time. It's we'll collect our RAM after, after this conversation. <laughs> We're back right after now to uh, have the next, uh, what you call it again? Home stretch. When we return from this break, do stay with us. <laughs>